Dear friends, welcome to the channel The Eastern Front. Throughout the history of all mankind, wars have occurred, and any war is impossible without discipline, as the army will quickly turn into an unruly crowd. Back in the days of the Roman Empire, there was the highest measure of disciplinary punishment called decimation, representing the death penalty of every tenth by lot. It was usually appointed for the loss of the banner, rebellion, and even for desertion. Ten soldiers cast lots, and the one on whom it fell was executed by his own nine comrades, stabbing with swords or spears. Today we will talk about the barrage detachments, and as that shown in the movies is true. When machine guns are firing at retreating Red Army units, let's try to figure out what is true and what is a myth. It is generally believed that the first NKVD barrage detachments appeared in 1941 during the Great Patriotic War, but this is not the case. They appeared during the soviet finnish War of 1939-1940. The offensive of the 139th Rifle Division was unsuccessful. In the battle from December 8 to December 12, against the Finnish group of General Tavel in the Talvoerv area, the division was defeated and was forced to retreat to the east for more than 50 kilometers, after which the front in this direction stabilized until the end of the war. Cases of desertion from the front have become more frequent, to prevent cases of desertion, an order appeared on January 21, 1940, which stated to ensure the fight against possible cases of desertion in the Red Army. To allocate one platoon of Red Army soldiers to the heads of the special departments of the active divisions for the organization of the barriers of each division. Barriers should be located in the areas of the field headquarters of divisions with the task of detaining deserters by checking the documents of the following military personnel and citizens, singly and unorganized. The document also says that deserters will be prosecuted, and also to strengthen control at railway stations and railway sidings along the route of military echelons. Three days later, on January 24, he was replaced by a new order. In fact, this is an amended and more detailed order. Also, instead of the Red Army soldiers, the barrage detachments were formed from the operational regiments of the NKVD. In addition, the detachments were ordered to work on the division headquarters line on both sides of the road at a distance of 5 to 10 kilometers towards the front to the regimental headquarters line. In addition to searching for deserters, their task was to protect communications in rear areas, roads, and fight against enemy saboteurs. Deserters were ordered to be tried by a military tribunal with a case review within a day. As can be seen from the order, the barrage detachments were not at the forefront and in addition to punitive functions, they also had other duties. Also, no one shot soldiers without trial as they like to show in Hollywood films. However, it is worth noting separately that during the war with Finland, the cold and poor supply of Red Army troops greatly affected the morale of soldiers. That is why many soldiers left their positions in search of food or simply got frostbite. In total, 27 NKVD barrage detachments of 100 people each were organized during the Finnish company. On April 4, 1940, 22 days after the end of the war, Voroshilov and Berea issued a new joint order about disbanding these detachments. At the beginning of the Great Patriotic War, military counterintelligence was part of the People's Commissary of Defense. On June 27, 1941, new directive issued No. 35,523. Organization of mobile control and barrage detachments on roads, railway junctions, for clearing forests, etc. allocated by the command with the inclusion of operational personnel with tasks in their composition. Are the tensions of deserters? B. Detaining all suspicious elements that have crossed the front line. C. A preliminary investigation carried out by operatives of the 3rd Directorate of the People's Commissary of Defense, one to two days. In the first days of the war, the situation at the front was very difficult. Some parts of the military units could not withstand the blows and retreated. Some units panicked and fled the battlefield. Some fighters from recently mobilized local residents fled to their homes. Masses of civilian refugees were leaving for the east. This situation at the front was actively used by both criminal looters and Nazi saboteurs from the Abwehr and SS. Ukrainian nationalists and immigrants from Russia, 
who were fluent in Russian and Ukrainian and easily pose as local residents. They were involved in the service in their special forces. Many were disguised in Soviet uniforms. First of all, spies, saboteurs, criminals, deserters had to be stopped by the employees of the first barrage detachments. In addition, they had to help soldiers who were lost or strayed from their units. After the trial, the detainees were either sent to their duty stations or transferred to law enforcement agencies. On July 17, 1941, by Resolution No. 187, the NKVD and the NKGB were merged into one structure. This was a very correct step, since one structure is more effective for more efficient and well-coordinated work. So the NKGB, the People's Commissariat of State Security, which was engaged in intelligence, counterintelligence, and government protection, joined the NKVD. As a result, special departments were formed. This helped to establish a closer connection between them and the territorial state security agencies. To ensure the operational activities, separate rifle platoons were created at special departments of NKV for divisions and corps, platoons for armies, rifle companies, and for fronts, battalions. And then the question arises whether they could drive someone into battle. To understand the scale, the rifle corps in the state is about 50,000 people. A platoon of NKV troops, about 30 people. Does anyone have enough imagination how 30 people will drive 50,000 into the attack? No less interesting is the document, Instructions for Special Departments of the NKVD to Combat Deserters, Cowards and Alarmists, dated July 19, 1941. Special Departments of the Division, Corps or Army in the fight against deserters, cowards and alarmists carry out the following activities. A. Organize a barrier service by setting up ambushes, posts, and patrols on military roads, refugee roads, and other traffic routes in order to exclude the possibility of any infiltration of military personnel who have voluntarily left combat positions. B. Thoroughly check every detained commander and Red Army soldier in order to identify deserters, cowards, and alarmists who fled from the battlefield. C. All identified deserters are immediately arrested and investigated for trial by a military tribunal. The investigation should be completed within a 12-hour period. All stragglers from part of the military are organized by platoon and under the command of verified commanders accompanied by a representative of the special department are sent to the headquarters of the corresponding division. E. In exceptional cases, when the situation requires the adoption of decisive measures for the immediate restoration of order at the front, the head of the special department is given the right to shoot deserters on the spot. The head of the special department reports on each such case to the special department of the army and the front. Carry out the sentence of the military tribunal on the spot, and if necessary, in front of the ranks. G. Keep quantitative records of all detainees and sent to the unit and personal records of all arrested and convicted. A. Daily inform the Special Department of the Army and the Special Department of the Front about the number of detainees, arrested, convicted, as well as about the number of commanders, Red Army soldiers and material units transferred to the unit. However, after some time, the directive of the NKVD of the USR No. 39,000, 212 of July 28, 1941 appeared on strengthening the detachments. It lists cases of the recruitment of prisoners of war and throwing them into the Soviet rear. The directive concluded that the work of the barrage detachments is not yet sufficiently organized, the inspection of detained persons is carried out superficially, often not by operational personnel, but by military personnel. In order to improve the work on identifying German agents in the Red Army units, it was decided to strengthen the barrage detachments by allocating experienced operatives, and also to conduct a survey of all, without exception, detained only by operatives. In September 1941, due to the bad situation on the fronts, at the initiative of the Army leadership, the Supreme Commander's headquarters by Directive No. 001919 created barrage detachments and rifle divisions. Here are some excerpts from this directive. The experience of the struggle against German fascism has shown that in our rifle divisions there are many panicked and hostile elements that at the first pressure from the enemy, they throw weapons, 
start to shout. We are surrounded and drag the rest of the fighters with them. As a result of such actions of these elements, the division flees, abandons the military equipment, and then begins to leave the forest alone. Similar phenomena take place on all fronts. In order to prevent this at the front, the headquarters of the Supreme High Command orders. 1. Each rifle division has a barrage squad of reliable fighters, numbering no more than a battalion, based on one company per rifle regiment, subordinate to the division commander and having at its disposal, in addition to conventional weapons, vehicles in the form of trucks, and several tanks or armored vehicles. 2. The tasks of the Barrage Squad are to consider direct assistance to the command staff in maintaining and establishing firm discipline in the division, suspending the flight of panic-obsessed servicemen without stopping before using weapons, eliminating the initiators of panic and flight, supporting honest and combat elements of the division who are not subject to panic, but carried away by mass panic. Unlike the Barrage detachments that continued to exist at special departments of the NKVD, Focused mainly on detaining deserters and suspicious elements, army barrage detachments were created in order to prevent unauthorized withdrawal of units. These units were much larger, a battalion per division instead of a platoon, and their personnel were not recruited from NKV soldiers, but from ordinary Red Army soldiers. They had no right to shoot the retreating units from machine guns. The maximum for which they had the right to use weapons was to neutralize or eliminate the armed instigators of flight. And again, a little simple arithmetic. Could 300, 400 soldiers of the detachments hold or drive into battle 10, 15,000 similarly armed fighters of the division? According to the report prepared by the deputy, the head of the Department of Special Departments of the NKV of the U.S. ever by the Commissar of State Security, of the third rank S.R. Milstein for the People's Commissar of Internal Affairs of the USRLP Beria. From the beginning of the war to October 10th of this year, 657,364 servicemen who straggled from their units and fled from the front were detained by special departments of the NKV and barrage detachments of the NKV troops to protect the rear. Of these, 249,969 people were detained by the operational barriers of special departments and 407,395 servicemen were detained by the NKV's rear guard detachments. Of the detainees, 25,878 people were arrested by special departments, the rest. 632,486 people were formed into units and sent back to the front. According to the resolutions of special departments and the sentences of military tribunals, 10,201 people were shot, of which 3,321 people were shot in front of the ranks. As we can see, the vast majority of servicemen detained by special departments and barrage detachments were not subjected to repression, but were sent to the front. Only about 4% of them were arrested, including 1.5% were shot. Thus, under the name Barrage Squad in the initial period of the Great Patriotic War, formations of different subordination operated. The Barrage detachments detained deserters and a suspicious element in the rear, stopping the retreating troops. In a critical situation, they themselves engaged in battle with the Germans, often suffering heavy losses at the same time. By 1944, the army leadership, which already often used barrage detachments as a reserve or as ordinary commanded units, completely stopped using them for their intended purpose due to the lack of such a need. In October 1944, they as such were liquidated. Lying about the barrage detachments causes anger among real veterans. Many of them did not encounter the activities of the detachments at all during the war, and if they did, it was very rare. Hero of the Soviet Union P.N. Lashenko Yes, there were barrage detachments, but I do not know that any of them fired on their own, at least in our sector of the front. I have already requested archival documents in this regard. There were no such documents. The detachments were at a distance from the front line, covered the troops from the rear from saboteurs and enemy troops, detained deserters who, unfortunately, were put things in order at the crossings, sent soldiers straying from their units to assembly points. I will say more, the front received replenishment. As we said, 
not smelling gunpowder in the barrage detachments, consisting exclusively of soldiers already fired, the most persistent and courageous were like a reliable and strong shoulder of the elder. It often happened that the barrage detachments found themselves face to face with the same German tanks, chains of German machine gunners, and suffered heavy losses in battles. This is an irrefutable fact. Cavalier of the Order of Alexander Nevsky A.G. Efremov. Yes, now those who know about the war from book pictures are composing such tall tales. Indeed, such detachments were exhibited in threatening areas. These people are not some kind of monsters, but ordinary fighters and commanders. They played two roles. First of all, they were preparing a defensive line so that the retreating could gain a foothold on it. Secondly, they stopped panicking. When the turning point in the course of the war came, I did not see these detachments anymore. The myth of the barrage detachments was actively used and is being used till now to denigrate the memory of the Great Patriotic War. This topic began to be promoted especially actively after the collapse of the Soviet Union in order to show the Soviet Union in the image of an inhuman monster, at the same time reluctantly remembering their skeletons in the closet. On my channel you could find an interview with a soldier who served during all war and barrage detachments. Not so long ago I took courses in screenwriting, and I'll tell you honestly, in order for a movie to be interesting and exciting, contrasts are needed in it. White replaces black, black replaces white. Otherwise, everyone would have fallen asleep right in the cinema. This is exactly the nice trigger for the barrage squads and war films. Dear friends, that's all for today. Write please in the comments what you think about barrage detachments. See you.